So here are the top 20 frequently asked interview questions about non-viable particle count in pharmaceutical industry. Subscribe to channel for more informative content. We will start with the very basic question what is difference between viable and non-viable particle count? Answer is the basic difference between viable and non-viable particles is that viable particles are the particles with at least one living microorganism affecting the sterility of a product whereas non-viable particles are the particles without microorganisms but they can act as a transporting agent for viable particles next basic question what is objective of particle monitoring in clean room answer is the objective of particle monitoring in clean room or clean zone is to assure that the required level of cleanliness is achieved at all the critical control points next question which guidelines are commonly referred for non viable particle count answer is here are the four guidelines that are referred for non viable particle count test first one is iso 14644-1 classification second is ugmp annex 1 third usp chapter number 797 year 2008 revision and fourth one is pda that is parental drug association journal volume 57 number 2 march april 2003 Next very frequently asked question about NVPC is that what is non viable particle limit for grade A and grade B in the below table GMP annex 1 permitted number of particles has been given for grade A at rest and in operation condition 0.5 micron particles shall not be more than 3520 and 5 micron particles shall not be more than 20 whereas for the grade B at rest and in operation acceptance criteria is changed in grade A for at rest condition 0.5 micron particles shall not be more than 3520 and 5 micron particles shall not be more than 29 whereas in operation condition for grade B 0.5 micron particles shall not be more than 352000 and 5 micron particles shall not be more than 2900 next very frequently asked question about NVPC is that what is non viable particle limit for grade A and grade B? In the below table, GMP Annex 1 permitted number of particles has been given for grade A at rest and in operation condition 0.5 micron particles shall not be more than 3520 and 5 micron particles shall not be more than 20. Whereas for the grade B at rest and in operation acceptance criteria is changed. In grade A for at rest condition, 0.5 micron particles shall not be more than 3520 and 5 micron particles shall not be more than 29 whereas in operation condition for grade B 0.5 micron particles shall not be more than 352000 and 5 micron particles shall not be more than 2900 Fifth question why only 0.5 and 5 micron particles are measured for non viable particle count Answer is during non viable particle count, we measure only 0.5 and 5 micron particles because most of the commonly found bacteria are in the size range of 0.5 to 5 micron, so this range is the main source of contamination. Next important question is what is the difference between alert limit and action limit for NVPC? Answer is action limits are generally set through regulatory guidelines such as Annex 1, the USP, or ISO standards. Whereas alert levels are specific to the facility and should be set based on the results of performance qualification that is PQ test and trends in historical data. The general consideration is that we don't need compulsorily take action when alert level is achieved. It is alert notification to check compliance state. Seventh question at what rate air is measured in commercial non viable particle counters? Answer is the particle counter should have a sample flow rate of at least 28.3 liters per minute that is 1 cfm and should be fitted with an isogonetic probe for sampling in unidirectional flow zones next important question is why particle counters are needs to be on at least 36 minutes prior to process monitoring answer is commonly used industrial particle counters works at flow rate of 1 cfm that is 1 cubic feet per minute air and guideline requirements given for the clean rooms are in cubic meter. To complete 1 cubic meter, we need approx 36 cubic feet air. Hence, we need to on particle counters at least 36 minutes 
prior to process monitoring next important question is what is moment of escalation or the false count answer is sometimes during measurement sudden peaks are observed for nvpc count these might be due to as per the checkpoints or fault counts due to electronic noise stray light or coincidence this can be considered as invalid and action need not be taken against these momentary excursions or false counts next very very important question what should be the action plan in case of a repeat nvpc excursion answer is in case of a repeat nvpc excursion is observed after performing the checks and remediation processing in the area shall be stopped further investigation shall be performed to identify the root cause this may include extensive area cleaning air velocity verification of hepa filters hepa filter integrity testing and air flow studies next important question is what should be the isokinetic probe location answer is the location of the sample probe depends on the criticality of the clean zone sample probes used in the sterile and aseptic environments should be located normally not more than 1 foot that is 30 cm away from the work site isokinetic probe should be within the air flow during filling and closing operation next question why zero count or pulse test is done answer is before you begin with daily sampling procedure it is recommended to practice false count or pulse test the purpose of this test is to verify that there is no internal contamination of the particle counter or electronic problems that would produce false high counts next important question what are the basic requirements for tubing used for particle monitoring device connection answer is in the case of portable particle monitoring systems the tubing length should not be more than 3 meters that is 10 feet tubing used for particle monitoring shall be compulsorily non particle shading sample tubing length should be minimized although tubing cannot be totally eliminated next question what is ideal sample height answer is it is good practice to take sample from at work height and about 1 meter above the floor it should be pointed in a direction such that the probability of detecting particles is maximized a poor practice is placing the particle counter on an elevated stand or tripod additionally it may not be appropriate to locate a sample probe directly under hepa filter as it is not representative for clean room or clean zone 15th question whether it is necessary to measure non viable particle count during entire batch processing answer is yes non viable particle count shall be measured during entire batch processing following statement given in 2009 u annex 11 creates requirement for continuous monitoring and alarms the statement is the grade a zone should be monitored at such a frequency and with a suitable sample size that all interventions transient events and any system deterioration would be captured and alarms triggered if alert limits are exceeded next question is what is working principle of non viable particle counters or how non viable particle counters measures the particle size the principle is reflection generated by particle on laser beam source when particle comes in a flow or direction of laser beam it creates a reflection generated by electric pulse which is then detected by photo detector refer below illustrative diagram for understanding the principle of non viable particle counters next important question how we can control non viable particle counts in clean room answer is regulatory focus has been increased towards the reducing the use of portable and human operated particle counters instead of that we can use permanently installed online computer controlled particle monitoring systems additionally we can reduce need for operator presence in grade a to place probes and take samples we can reduce need for operators in grade b areas we can remove equipments from aseptic grade b that is large portables or carts which can interfere with air flow and introduce additional surface area to the sterile core next question what should be the number of sampling locations to be tested for non viable particle count answer is the number of sample locations 
when certifying or validating clean room is determined by the chart provided in ISO 14644-1 the chart is given as below in one column area of clean room is given in meter square for that area or less than or equal to area we can use the another column that is reflecting the minimum number of sampling locations to be tested next question is what are the commonly used particle counters in pharmaceutical industry here is the list of five pharmaceutical industry particle counter providers first one is beckman non viable particle counter second is emil limited third is pms that is particle measuring system fourth one is next gen portable particle counter and fifth is lighthouse worldwide solutions last but important question what are the other environmental monitoring tests that are done for the clean room answer is surface monitoring active air monitoring passive air monitoring microbiological media and identification and particle counting keep watching farm grow subscribe to channel for more videos related to pharmaceutical industry